Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. Challenge. Well, <clears throat> this is one of those double up days. I have to do this because of scheduling issues. Um, I have to do it a few times this spring. I just went walking half a mile and let me tell you, they say it's going to be 83 today, but I don't know. It feels hotter and more humid than that. Here we are, February 20th, 2018, and it is so warm, like it is May 5th. I feel a little breeze, but uh, <clears throat> when the heat came in, I knew that's it. We had the cold, cold, cold that we get maybe once every 20 years. Did a little damage to my house, $110 worth. Um, a lot more for others. But when it passed, I said, I know it's going to start getting warm. I just could, almost, almost like I could feel it. <laughs> like the next day, it was strange. It went from being below freezing, quite a bit below, then to just getting warm real quick. Uh, so that's it. I mean, we may have some more cold, but the scary thing is if we get cold fronts, you could have tornadoes because you got that really cold air and then this extreme heat. And that's what happened. Um, three years ago, I guess it was three years ago when the tornado hit in February. I heard it. I thought it was coming toward my house, but then I realized that it was going, you know, perpendicular to the house. And I told my friend, I, I was on the phone when it hit. I said, I think it's going north. And it was going northeast, and then it did a lot of damage. It destroyed about 20 houses in this town. <laughs> it sounded like a huge box fan. You know, those square fans you can buy, and they make that swirling sound. It didn't sound like regular wind. Um, <clears throat> My father said, oh, a tornado sounds like a train coming. I said, I think that's the sound you get when it's coming at you. But when it's going maybe to the side, it's a different sound. But you can tell it's not regular wind. Anyway, off of that subject. The bottom line is it's very warm. <laughs> and that's Louisiana. We get bitterly cold, bitterly cold due to the humidity. And then it gets extremely warm which a lot of you viewers would hate especially if you're not used to this extreme humidity all right you say well i thought this was a taste challenge it is <laughs> i'm trying to recover my faculties after walking in that heat you see what i'm saying i'm stalling for time um okay we've got two very old brands really not very old but pretty old barton American whiskey, a blend. Do you notice whiskey was introduced in 1949? Yeah, it's almost 70 years old. Now in your town, they might sell Barton gin. I think it's got like silver and green with white. Like this is gold and red. And then they've got Barton vodka, Barton, I think there's straight bourbon whiskey. Well, we know there's straight bourbon. I have a bottle in my cabinet what am i talking about uh gin vodka i think there's barton brandy <laughs> i've never seen that so it's like a line of well it was a company it got acquired by sazerac in 2009 so they had their own line of stuff all right uh and they're from bardstown kentucky now that bottle is a blend of 80 percent grain neutral spirits or unaged corn liquor, okay, and 20% straight whiskey, probably Barton bourbon, more than likely, because it's, it's aged at least four years. The baseline Barton is a four-year age bourbon, so it makes sense, right, that they would use it as not even an expensive bourbon anyway. And here is Club 400 uh, blended whiskey. Oh, but it's not from Kentucky. Look at that. It's MD. Not Mogan David, Maryland, Special Reserve, Maryland. Oh, 
Now this one is three years old. So we got a three year old whiskey, it tells you right there. This whiskey is three years old versus a four year minimum aged. Might be older, but it's probably four. Majestic Distilling, Baltimore, Maryland. Who owns Majestic Distilling? Seagram's, uh, Seagram's. <laughs> I was drinking a Seagram's uh, spiked strawberry daiquiri. That's coming up maybe next week. I'll post it. Sazerac, excuse me. And then we've got Barton, which is also owned by Sazerac. Okay, so they went around buying up all these little companies. Okay, what did I know about the Club 400? Well, it had an unusually, it seemed like it was a little more high, rock, like um, it had more rye notes than a regular blended whiskey. Like, almost like you're drinking a rye whiskey, but you know, you're not, you're not. What are they using in this? Like, what is the 20% um, straight whiskey? Uh, I don't know. Probably ancient age <laughs> bourbon. Okay, uh, because that's age three years, you see. So you just take some ancient age, blend it with the uh, corn distillate, which is unaged, which they they told me on the tour they buy it from Indiana Midwest Grain Products. They're not making their own corn with uh, corn liquor because it's so cheap to just buy it from those people. And in fact, MGP makes a whole array of products and they sell it to people. And then they make craft whiskey out of it, craft bourbon. Okay, <laughs> handcrafted. This bourbon whiskey is blended <laughs> and bottled. <laughs> now it can be a straight bourbon and be blended because it, it's a um, blend of straight bourbons, okay? At our quaint facility in Framing, Cog, Cog, Framing Cognition, Kentucky, <laughs> started by mom, you know, Ma and Pa, Dunkel, Dunkel, you know, whatever. But they don't tell you that they actually bought the whiskey from Indiana. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> this came out in 1950, 1954, right? Yeah, 1954, something like that. I don't need to memorize everything since there is a database you can use. Um, and this came out in 1949, so not that many years apart. Um, all right, so this is coming from the bottling plant in Baltimore County, Maryland, about a mile out of the city limits of Baltimore. I'd like to go drive over there and just to look at it. I bet that's an interesting thing, man. Right by the railroad tracks, it's on Majestic Drive. <laughs> Makes sense. Got to save a lot. Well, I got to save some of it. I got some more taste challenges. I can't buy Club 400 just anywhere, you know? All right, and uh, I'll pour some of this. Okay, so um, do I think I'll be able to tell them apart? I think I'll be able to make a little differentiation because um, I think I think what's going to happen is that the Barton is going to be a little more dull because if you drink the Barton straight bourbon, it's kind of dull. I mean, it doesn't taste bad. There's nothing off or foul or... Um, unpalatable about it, but it's kind of bland. And the Club 400 has, it seems to have a higher rye presentation. Now, these differences are very minimal, okay? They're not profound differences. They're, they're perhaps noticeable, okay? Now, the beautiful beer reviews, beautiful beer review says, afternoon, Ron, afternoon to you. Yeah, it's hot. Woo, well, I finished my monologue about the heat, right? <laughs> well, it's warm, not hot. I think if you get above 85, though, you could call it hot. It's 83, I guess, so it's on the cusp. Um, which one's gonna be better? I doubt there'll be a winner. Uh, so in this case, it's gonna be one of those things where you just shop price, you shop price, and then when you finish doing that, you shop price, okay? 
Um, I do have a bourbon taste challenge series coming up and it's speckle tail versus all the other bourbons I've got. And you, if you've been watching this series, the taste challenges, you know what those are. The Jim Beam, the Jim Beam Choice, the Jack Daniels, Jack Daniels Green Label, <laughs> all of that. It's not a true bourbon because it's aged apparently in used barrels. But it is essentially a bourbon because, you know, it's the corn, whiskey, it's it's aged at least four years. It's, um, you know, they use charred barrels. It's the same old thing, but it's just not <clears throat> using new barrels. All right. He says it's almost 80 in Alabama today. Yeah, you know, once it gets above 80, it starts to get a little sticky. I mean, I wouldn't be wearing a shirt if I wasn't on air, okay? I mean, it's like strip down time. That's what people in Louisiana do. They go around in shorts with flip-flops and no shirt because it's so hot. But it only is like that from, say, like mid-February to mid-October. So, <laughs> all right. Um, well, <clears throat> There is definitely a noticeable difference in the appearance. This one is gold and this one's amber. I don't know if you can see that, but I can, I'm seeing it from the outside light. This one is certainly amber or even a chestnut, and that one is just gold. <clears throat> Alcohol eggs, too. So people that say, he says, laugh out loud. I don't know if you're in North Alabama. I suspect you're in Northern Alabama if it's almost 80, because I think around Mobile is probably oh, well above 80. Um, a lot of a lot of people will say, ah, oh, it's all the same liquor. They just put it in different labels. Yeah, um, I don't think so because uh, if you read the specs on them, they don't match. You know, I mean, yeah, if it's private label stuff like the Albertsons line of bourbon and the Winn Dixie line of bourbon and the Walmart line of bourbon, yeah, okay, fine. It's probably the same stuff. But within the Sazerac world, no, it is not the same stuff. Okay, I'm sorry, it's not. Just look at their mash bill. That's a PDF file that they provide. They are not the same. The Beautiful says Birmingham. Oh, okay, um, that's like North Central. Northern-ish Central, right? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention last time and I, <laughs> I took the wrong highway. I said, look what I've done. So I had to get off the interstate. I, I didn't want to go to Atlanta, you know, so I had to backtrack. And then I went up this other highway and then I intersected uh, 59 North. <laughs> I was trying to go to Tennessee, not Alabama, not Atlanta. Yo, neighbor says, howdy, howdy, neighbor, howdy to you. Now I got to make sure I don't look because if I glance, I'm going to tell them apart in a split second. That's how close, that's how the, different the appearance is. Yeah, talking about Alabama, that's where I bought the Club 400 in Alabama. <laughs> in Decatur, Alabama. And what a ripoff it was. I mean, the price of the actual bourbon was cheap. Uh, the, the blended whiskey was cheap. But when they added the taxes, I said, what? I said, I'll never buy uh, alcohol in Alabama again. No way, Jose. <laughs> but when I saw it, I said, I better get it because I'll never see it again. I'm, I am glad I bought it, but I just hated getting ripped off by the state of Alabama. And um, I did like that Wheeler. What's it called? Wheeler National Wildlife Refuge. They had a trail back through the woods, and that was nice. That was a nice break from all that walking, all that driving. I gotta admit that, that, that was, I took a little video and then I, it's on the internet here, and then I took some photos. Yeah, that was sweet. Do you like scotch? Yes. Yes, and I've done some reviews of scotch. I did a review of uh, Clan McGregor, and I did a review of,
What was that stuff? It's been around forever. Oh, yeah, Buchanan's <laughs> since 1884. Tax is such a terrible liquor tax here. Yeah, it's pitiful. Your neighbor says, but in Canada, once laugh out loud, super expensive. Oh, yeah. I mean, I hear people in Canada all the time talk about how their prices are so grim. And if you think Canada's bad, Australia is way worse. They pay outlandish prices for liquor. Like Jazz, not Jazz, um, Swilling Grog was doing a review of... Um, um, Oh, Dogfish had 60 minute IPA. And he was like, I cost me, what did it cost him? Like $3.85 for a single bottle. And it was $1.99 here. So their prices are always super high. I mean, for regular beer too, like Miller High Life, you buy a 12 pack in Australia, it's like $25. <laughs> here you can get it for $10.99. It's just ridiculous. Okay. Time for the challenge. I have things to do. We have college baseball people. <laughs> Southeastern Louisiana University. They played University of Southern Illinois at Edwardsville. We won two out of three. Botched the last game. We've got a big schedule coming up. Louisiana State University, LSU. We're playing Purdue at home. I'm talking about home games. University of Houston Cougars, two games. Um, This, this month, they play Connecticut, three games, University of Connecticut. They're not just playing these, like, off, you know, these obscure schools. Oh, no, sir. That's why their um, ratings index is high, and they get those uh, at-large bids. Even if they don't win their conference, they get the bid to the NCAA tournament because they, they have a strong schedule. A liter of Jack is like $55 a liter in Canada. Well, that's twice as much as here. And I think that's terrible that you have to deal with that. Well, I have to say right off the bat, these are both strong in the nose. There's a strong alcohol burn in the nose. It smells like a doctor's office. You know what I mean? That alcohol burn, you know, but this is grain alcohol, not uh, it's not rubbing alcohol that will kill you if you drink it. There's also um, with this one here, there's um. I might have to close my eyes because I'm really scared I'm going to glance at them. It'll ruin the whole examination. It's very light, <laughs> and, and there's, um, well, a little pepper note. Ah, see what I mean? Rye. What does that mean? Club 400. Okay. A little. <sighs> Mm. Wood, dried flowers, something. <laughs> it's very pleasant. Now, I had a viewer from Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland area say, oh, that stuff's everywhere in our area. I mean, there's Club 400 everywhere you turn. I would believe that because that's where it comes from. You know, you go up there and they got National Bohemian everywhere, the beer. Uh, and Club 400 is one of those things that used to be its own line. You know what I mean? Club 400 bourbon, Club 400 blended, Club 400 um, gin, brandy, etc. And a lot of those still exist. So it's sort of like a cultural feature of Baltimore. People up there, if they're having a party, uh, let's say a clam bake, whatever, they're going to, or crab boil, they're going to drink Club 400. Okay, it's like in New Orleans. They're going to drink Taka, Taka. You go to New Orleans, there's billboards everywhere for Taka. It may be the case in Baltimore with Club 400. This I do not know. Who is your favorite Major League Baseball team? Go Blue Jays. Well, I've been to the Blue Jays twice in 2007. I went to two games there, and it was fascinating. But my favorite team is the White Sox, Chicago White Sox. Uh-huh, yeah, that's right. Now, this one here. Um. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you see, <laughs> this one, though, let's make my nose run. It's so spicy. I think it's it's got like a sourdough thing, like you know, sourdough bread. <clears throat> it's like... 
you know, the bread, it's got more of a bread presentation. And that one has more of a rye spice presentation. Okay, well, let's get to the taste because I got a feeling, a feeling down inside. It's going to be tough. Okay. And after drinking that Seagram spiked watermelon daiquiri, I mean, strawberry daiquiri, this is like a, a pleasant diversion because that stuff is so chemical manufactured. And unfortunately, I have to report that I have half the can left. And then, then you drink something like this, which is all natural, right? Corn, that's natural. You say it's grains, GMO, GMO. I don't know if it's GMO, uh, you know what I mean? But it's ostensibly natural corn, <laughs> water, barley malt, rye, and more corn from the bourbon. So, you know, hey, it's natural. Yeast, it's not a bunch of junk. All right. No coloring, no flavor. Well, no, nah, okay. All right. Blended whiskey is allowed to have up to 2%, what they, what they call blending sherry. Added to it, sherry wine, blending sherry added to it, up to 2% and without a disclosure. How do I know that? I read the law. Look it up. I'll, I'll even give you the link if you, if you press me on it. I don't mind pre people pressing me on stuff. I used to tell my students when I taught history and geography, never believe what a teacher tells you. Always check them on things. I told them I wouldn't be offended. They didn't check me much because they knew I'd come up with lots of documents. But I mean, I didn't mind doing it. Okay. But um, yeah, blended whiskey and Canadian whiskey and let me repeat that and Canadian whiskey <laughs> can have blending sherry and apparently other wine like plum wine. That's why a lot of Canadian whiskeys say with natural flavors added because they add other stuff to it and it's not pure whiskey. That's why bourbon aficionados don't like blended whiskey. All right. Because bourbon cannot be adulterated. It has to be pure. Kind of. <laughs> stuff. All right. Um, has to be pure color. Can't have coloring added. Scotch. Yes. They can add coloring. They do not have to disclose it. So you might say, look how amber that scotch looks. Isn't it beautiful? It ought to be. They added <laughs> caramel coloring. You know what I mean? <laughs> if they didn't add that, it might be almost white, <laughs> clear. But bourbon, if it looks amber, it's because it's amber. The only thing that made it change color was that charcoal that charred wood you know when it goes in the wood it's clear you know but they don't add coloring all right uh, does american win Duh. Huh. okay we'll get it together does american blended whiskey have added coloring uh no is it allowed to have added coloring yes if it is disclosed on the label. You will notice that neither of these labels make that disclosure, so they are not colored. The color here is coming from the bourbon that is added to the 80% grain neutral spirits, which is clear, unaged corn distillate, grain whiskey, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it vodka. But, you know, the vodka gets uh, like charcoal filter like 20 times some of those so that, that that is not being done with the the grain distillate okay so that's that's shipped over to the vod the vodka part of uh barton and uh buffalo trace and that los angeles and also that maryland distillery uh bottling rectifying plant Oh, my goodness, this is going to be tough. I think somebody's cutting down a tree. All right.
They're doing something. So, um, I will say this before I try to um, differentiate them on flavor. They're both very good. So don't let people fool you. Don't believe the talk. You know what I mean? You can get Club 400 unless you go to Alabama. You can, you can get Club 400 in Maryland or whatever for a really good price. And I think you'll really enjoy it. You can get Barton somewhere. I saw it in Frankfort, Kentucky for a very good price and it's very well made and it's very enjoyable and it's quality. It is not bum juice, it's not trash, it's not garbage, it is high quality. And I'm standing by that. Gary, oh, Gary says, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Johnny Walker is good, says your neighbor. I've never had it. Do you like clear rum or dark butter? I've never had rum, so I can't comment. Do you like Mardi Gras or is it overrated? I don't think it's overrated. Yeah, I like it. I went to it <laughs> um, this year, and then. But I live only about twenty nine miles from the route. You know what I mean? Thirty miles from the parade route. No, not that far. Yeah, twenty nine miles. So it's like I can go watch it and then just leave when I feel like it, and come home and eat lunch and take a nap. You know what I mean? So it's like a. I don't have to be committed to it so much. I always come back to sour ma sour mash. You hear a tree cutting during a hangover. Oh, okay. Uh, don't want to get a hangover then. I don't want to hear trees cutting. So, but they do a lot of that kind of stuff around here in this semi-rural area, uh, suburban area. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, now people are saying you're just doing all that banter because you can't tell them apart. Uh, yeah, that's. You got me there. Um, uh, wow, 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 wow. Okay. All right. I got to say, whoa. That was a rye rush. <laughs> Do you like a rye rush? Um, all right. I think I'm going to call it. That last hit really hit. Not necessarily alcoholically, but in the flavor. And I think this is Barton because it's a little more, if you want to use the word dull, I would use the word mellow. And this is the Club 400 because it's a little more of that rye rush, that Pikesville rye. That's the people that make Pikesville rye back in the old days. Yes, you can still go to the store and buy Pikesville rye. But I don't think it's made in Baltimore anymore. But anyway, that's where it originated. You know, it's like a classic thing. So, oh, which one's better? Mm. <clears throat> Honestly, I think both are very nice especially when you consider the price. The price makes them so and nice. But um, I think the one to my right, or could be your left, depending how you're looking at this. Some people, the screen is it's flipped and some people it isn't. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the internet. Um, but this one seems to have a little bit more rye spice, so I think it's the winner by just a nose, but barely a winner. And I think it's the car, car stairs. <laughs> I think it's the Club 400. Special Reserve. The iconic Balmore. The iconic Balmore whiskey. Except that it's Barton. All right. Okay. Well, let's see. Let me think out loud now. See, how do I approach this? Uh, let's see. What do I say to try to cover my failure. Uh, Gary says, in Cincinnati, the local number one morning radio show has been complaining about Canadian liquor taxes. What a choice, national. What a choice. Oh, he meant, what a choice, comma. National medical care or lower price booze. 
Well, Geary, I think you're probably aware of my political viewpoint, so you know which choice I'd make. <laughs> Well, this is shocking. Shocking. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about the four year versus three year. That might have thrown it. That might have done it because the Barton is aged a minimum of four years. Club 400, the whiskey and Club 400 is aged exactly three years. Don't fool yourself. Age makes a difference. And that is showcased or exemplified in the taste challenges that I did with the Redemption Rye. Because that Redemption Rye bourbon is aged only one year. Now, come on, people. You're going to take that grain neutral spirit, <laughs> that corn liquor. I don't know. You know, call it what you want. It's the same stuff. You're going to put it in a brand new charred oak barrel for only 12 months. And then you're going to expect it to have complex flavor. I'm sorry, it's not going to have that. And the Redemption Ride does not have that. Oh, it has flavors, but there, there's no depth of flavor. And I think what broke the tie here, so to speak, was that the Barton is aged four years and the and the, the Club 400 is only aged three years now. Uh, I don't feel bad about it because uh, this is a, t I said it would be a tough challenge. Oh, I know what he's doing. <laughs> he's cutting the grass, and, which is something I'm gonna do in two days because my grass is so ragged. I've already cut it once or we should say cutting the weeds because it's mostly weeds, but the grass, the actual St. Augustine grass is coming in with a vengeance. Believe me, it's coming in with a vengeance. That's Jerry. He is a dedicated Bud Light fan. He drinks any kind of beer available as long as it's Bud Light. He and his wife love Bud Light and they love Marlboro Gold hard pack, you know, the box, the flip, flip top. And I know when they're smoking, cause it might be two in the morning and I'm laying in bed and the smoke comes in my bedroom. It wafts across the yard. <laughs> cause I, you know, you keep the windows open this time of year. You don't sleep with air conditioning. You're not going to pay the electric company. Um, and I say to myself, listen, look at them. They're over there smoking. But at least it's quality product. <laughs> All right. Um, but sometimes they wake me up because it could be two in the morning. They'll be talking about issues, whatever. You know, but, uh. All right. So I got it wrong. Oh, well. Sorry. Your neighbor says, are you a Saints fan? Well, yeah. Um, I go to at least one game a year. I've been to at least one game a year every year since 1993. I watch all the games. I guess I'm a fan, so to speak. Oh my goodness. AT&T. Hold on, people. Hello? Yeah? I'm going to call you right back because I'm on the internet, but I'll call you right back. All right, bye. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Um, so, I mean, a fan, I don't know. Put it to you like this. If you have a wedding and it's being held on the day of a Saints game, I'm not going to be at the wedding. So <laughs> I heard Drew, I heard Drew Brees might go to the Browns. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Drew Brees is that self-defeating. Geary says you choose wisely. I'm completely unmedicated at age 63. I know what works. I can count 20 people who are drinkers in good health and I just eat well. Hey, you know what medication I take every day? One vitamin C, that's all I take. I know people that live on medicine. I swear to you, they live, and I'm talking about people in my family. You say, what do they eat on a daily basis? They eat medicine. That's basically what their food is. Do they live a healthy and quality life? Uh, to me, no. 
I think the side effects outweigh the whatever supposed benefit they're getting from all this medicine they live on. But um, who am I to spoil your party? You know, I mean, if you like to live on, if you like to eat medicine for your daily diet, go ahead. I mean, but I, I wouldn't do it. Drinkers live longer. This is a fact. 100% says that. It was just in the paper today, AP News, Associated Press News, people who drink alcohol live longer. I mean, they're shriveled up, you know, they got a red nose, but they're like 98. I've been drinking since 1929. All the health food people, they die, you know, when they're like 48. All right. Uh, hello, Ron. Just got in, says Larry. Gary says, I'm going to step out for a smoke. <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, but the Drew Brees thing is making me drink more. I do take a B complex every day. Okay, you know, vitamin C. All right, enough of that jibber jabber. I didn't get it right. I'm sorry. Uh, but the final analysis is these are both high quality, and uh, I don't think you can go wrong either way. You spend money on Club 400 or you spend money on Barton, and I think you win. You keep winning and winning and winning with those two products at least. Thanks for watching this taste challenge. And I think Thursday we're going to do two more, a morning, Dawn Busters, Dawn Busters, and an afternoon. We'll see how it works, but I, I do believe that's probably going to be the case. Thanks for watching this video production.